35 millimeter motion picture film has captured some of the greatest movies ever made. Star War, Star War II, Star War III, Robocop III, The Flintstones and Viva Rock Vegas, Twilight 1 through 5. All of these were shot on film. It's an undeniable fact that film is the superior medium and it makes everything better. Kodak's Vision 3 motion picture color cinema film stocks are so tantalizing to photo enthusiasts. In the photo world, we can't get our hands on bulk color film anymore because it's all been discontinued, even though that would be amazing in a time where color film prices are skyrocketing. But Kodak makes very large rolls of color film for 35mm motion picture cameras. Using cinema film for still photography is a pretty popular way of being able to shoot color film in large quantities. Many people offer motion picture film already in smaller canisters for your 35mm camera, or you can invest in a 400 foot roll and you could use 3D printed bulk loaders to roll those down into more manageable sizes. You could also just use a darkroom if you have the access to it and the ability to cut shorter rolls from a 400 foot one. But the roadblock for many with doing this is the Remjet layer. Remjet is a special carbon backing on color cinema film stocks, which works to prevent halation and scratching on the film when it's moving through cinema cameras at high speeds. I talked about this in my video last week focused on Cinesto, but to recap, in a regular motion picture film developing machine, the Remjet layer is blasted off of the film with jets of water, but regular photo lab processing machines lack that ability, which makes it difficult for many photo labs to handle small rolls of motion picture film. So unless your photo lab says otherwise, you can't have them develop your little rolls of motion picture film. But luckily, we live in a wonderful world where there exist many options for home developing ECN2 rolls yourself using kits such as this one from Flickfilm. Photo color film uses a process called C41, whereas cinema color film uses a process called ECN2, which stands for Eastman Color Negative. They're very similar processes, but motion picture ECN film in an ECN process is designed to yield a negative with a lower gamma, which refers to density and contrast, in order to be used in a motion picture printing process. Not important in this video, but when a movie is being printed, the color negative is exposed onto color print stock, and it goes through a slightly different process called ECP, which is Eastman Color Positive. I've done some developing videos on the channel already, including black and white negative, color negative, and even black and white reversal a few months ago. So I I definitely recommend checking those out because ECN2 is very similar to color negative developing. So a lot of the technical information still kind of applies and my black and white negative developing video has a lot of the basics and fundamentals about loading film developing tanks at home and all the kind of groundwork that's important to know for this kind of process. I'm gonna show off the developing process of doing ECN film rolls yourself at home as well as some recent examples I developed along with just talking a little bit more about using cinema film for stills. I'm using this small ECN home developing kit from Flickfilm, which is a Canadian manufacturer, and you can find information for that down in the description of this video. The Flickfilm ECN kit is a small developing kit good for about eight rolls of film and contains all the chemicals that you need. We have our pre-bath powder, developing powder, bleach powder, fix, stop bath, and our stabilizer. The kit makes 500 milliliters of chemicals. This mixing and developing process, again, is very, very similar to the process for C41, which I've already covered. So if you want a little more detailed breakdown for developing color film, then definitely go check out that video because this one's gonna be a little bit quicker. I've got some beakers, gloves, thermometer, a little heated water bath, also by Flick Film, small containers, and distilled water that I'm using for mixing everything. Let's start with my pre-bath. I take 400 milliliters of water that is at 38 degrees Celsius, add the pre-bath powder to it, top it up with water to the 500 milliliter line, and then mix it all together until the powder is dissolved and I put it into my labeled container. I also like to shake up the containers really well to make sure that everything is really, really well dissolved. And I'm just gonna repeat this basic process for each of the chemicals that I'm mixing. Water, chemical, remaining water, mix. The bleach is also mixed with water at 38 degrees Celsius. So I add my chemicals to 400 milliliters of water, mix it up, add water to the 500 milliliter line before putting it back into the container and making sure it's really, really mixed together super well. For my stop bath, I have about 300 milliliters of water in the container, 
Add the small amount of stop bath liquid and then top it up with more water to 500 milliliters. I do the same mixing process for my fix, but the fix is mixed at room temperature this time. The stabilizer is also mixed at room temperature and it's just a small amount of powder that gets added to the water. The developer I'm doing last only because it needs to be mixed at the highest temperature of 45 degrees Celsius. With 400 milliliters of water at the correct temperature, I add my developing powder, top it up with water to make my full 500 milliliters, and then mix it all up. This gives me six fully mixed, ready to go chemicals when I'm done. Pre-bath, developer, stop bath, bleach, fix, and stabilizer, which means that I'm good to develop. The developing process for ECN2 rolls is almost completely the same as the process for the C41 rolls, but the biggest difference being that we have to remove the backing with a pre-bath before the developer. It's not a difficult process, as long as you just follow the instructions that come with your kit and you'll be perfectly fine. My pre-bath is at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and the rest of my chemicals are at 41.1 degrees Celsius or 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Put the pre-bath in the tank, Tap it once or twice to release any air bubbles and just let it sit for about 10 seconds. This will soften the backing on the film so that it can be removed with some rinsing. I pour the pre-bath back into its container for reuse and now I'll rinse three times with water that's roughly the same temperature as the pre-bath. During these rinses, you have to shake the tank pretty hard in order to remove the backing, much harder than you would ever want to move the tank when you're actually developing. Once we pour out the water from our first rinse, we'll see that it's turned almost entirely black. By the third and final rinse though, the water is much lighter and usually has a pink color to it. Now we can do the actual developing because much of the backing has been removed which helps to avoid contaminating and weakening our chemicals. First is the developer which goes in the tank for 3 minutes. Invert gently for the first 10 seconds and always tap the tank down after inversions to release air bubbles. Make sure you have a timer going and invert 4 times every 30 seconds until the end of the 3 minutes. Once that's done, the developer is poured back into the container and we quickly pour in the stop bath, which ceases any further development. With the stop bath, we invert just once and we let it sit for 30 seconds. It's really important to be moving quickly with these chemical steps to make sure that there's not a lot of downtime in between things. After the stop bath, I do a simple water rinse three times. I'm not concerned with the water temperature for rinsing as long as it's not too hot or too cold. Rinse for a few seconds, pour it out, and repeat until it's been rinsed three times. Next up is our bleach, which goes again for three minutes, same as the developer. Just like that first step, we invert for 10 seconds at the very start, then we invert four times every 30 seconds until the end. The bleach is poured back into its container and is followed again by rinsing three times with water to get rid of any remaining bleach. Now for the fix, which only goes for two minutes this time, but again with the same 10 seconds of inversion at the start, and then four inversions every 30 seconds until the end of the two minutes. After the fix step, your film is entirely developed and we're nearly done. Open up the tank and just rinse the film for five minutes before taking it out. Normally in C41 or black and white developing after rinsing, we would use our stabilizer or a final rinse chemical which helps your film to dry properly. But with our ECN roll, we need to hang it up first in order to remove any remaining remjet. For doing this, I use a very, very soft sponge which I wet and then slowly wipe down the back of the film. Make sure that you aren't wiping the emulsion side of the film because it will damage your image. The back of the film has a glossier look to it, whereas the emulsion side is more matte in appearance. You can also try using something like a very, very soft wet cloth, but ultimately you want to use something that's going to help to remove any bits of that backing, while also not scratching or leaving any sort of residue on the film. I carefully wipe the film a few times and this helps to remove the remaining bit of backing for a nice clean negative. Once that's done, I carefully put it back into a container and let it soak in the stabilizer for one minute before hanging it up to dry. And you should have a fully developed, relatively clean looking ECN negative. Once the negative dried, I used a little camera scanning setup in order to capture the frames and then inverted them in Lightroom using Negative Lab Pro. The Vision 3 stocks from Kodak are some of the best color films out there and it's the evolution of decades of work on Kodak's part in terms of manufacturing color negative film. The role I developed in this video is some of the 50 ISO daylight film, which is some of my favorite when shooting Super 8 and 16 and is really my preferred choice for using with stills. I usually find the Vision stocks have really nice blues to their colors and especially with the 50 
ISO stock, very nice grain structures to them. It is somewhat vivid, but usually I find the vision stuff to have also like a unique and sort of muted look at times to it, which makes it a great film for further editing. And that's ultimately what it's designed for in a larger motion picture process, to give a nice flat negative that is great to work with when it comes to the color grading process later in production. You can kind of compare it to Portra, depending of course on the ISO that you choose. Flexible with room for further editing, typically a little warm, and overall a film that's designed with a lot of pro uses in mind. Also, so much of people's final look with these films is impacted by little variations in developing, especially if you're doing it yourself, the lenses that you use on your camera, and the programs you use for editing and handling the scans. All of that impacts your film and your final images differently, so it's really easy to end up with shots that look different from other examples. It also makes the whole I don't edit my film scans mentality almost like a completely nonsense statement. I also have some 250D that I shot, which I'm finding much warmer and maybe not as vivid as my 50D shots. These 250D shots are done further into the fall weather though, so the overcast lighting of course renders things differently than the 50D shots in better sunlight. This was developed further into the lifespan of my chemical kit as well, and weaker chemicals impact the developed images, especially with color. It's important to be aware of how many roles you've developed, how many roles the kit is intended for, how old your chemicals are, and how they're being stored. You can extend your developing time as you go if you find you're getting thinner negatives. But if you start to see things such as heavy color shifts and pronounced grain, then it's likely time for new chemicals. If you're looking for a way to make shooting color film cheaper for yourself, then there's nothing that I can think more to recommend than exploring bulk loading and checking out some of these ECN, Kodak, Vision, motion picture stocks. It is extra work though, because not all photo labs offer a service for developing small rolls of cinema film. You're gonna be likely developing and then ultimately scanning your stuff all on your own. And if you're new to that, then it does involve a lot of initial investment. For a quick reference, you can buy a 400 foot roll of Vision 3 250 50D for $363.95 American dollars from b and Photo. 400 feet is roughly 72, 36 exposure rolls. So that's like $5 a roll or so. Plus the time you're gonna have to put into bulk rolling, developing, and then scanning the film. You can also just buy 100 foot bulk loader friendly rolls from places like the Film Photography Project. There are photo labs out there that offer ECN hand developing services though, such as Downtown Camera here in Toronto. There's also a Reddit post I've seen, which I'll link to below where people were sharing labs that offer ECN processing. For clarification here, Remjet only exists on the Vision 3 Color Cinema film stocks from Kodak. So that's 50D, 200T, 250D, and 500T. It isn't something that you encounter on the black and white Kodak X stock or Ektachrome in its motion picture format either. The pre-bath rinse in this kit works really well and most of my stuff came out without issue. It is still important to be wiping the film down before the final stabilizing bath though because a bit of that ramjet backing does still remain. It shows up like this when you scan your film and it's just a lot to edit out so better to try and physically remove it. If you're careful, you can always rewash your negative and try and remove some of that backing if you missed it initially but of course take care of your negatives because they can scratch easily. I know there are homemade pre-bath options out there for people who are maybe just doing it without a full kit or if you're doing it and you're doing it with C41 chemicals instead. So I'll find some of that and link to that below in the description as well as links to other ECN kits. I know Cinesto offers one, QWD offers one, but I don't really know what QWD is uh, as well as this flick film one, like I mentioned. Being able to shoot these Vision 3 Cinema film stocks for stills allows you to instantly access a whole new lineup of films, both daylight and tungsten balanced. There aren't really any tungsten balanced photo films out there anymore. There used to be, but they're pretty much all discontinued from my knowledge now. The Vision 3 stocks ultimately share a lot in common with Kodak's portrait lineup as well, because certain film technology is used in manufacturing for both stocks, and they were both kind of refined around the same time in the earlier 2000s. Or if you want to save no money, but still shoot cinema films, then you can choose the Cinesto option. They they make Cinesto 50D, which is the Vision 3 50D stuff from Kodak, Cinesto 800T, which is Vision 3 500T, and soon Cinesto 400D, which is something. I wouldn't necessarily say it's just 250D repackaged, but it's some form of Kodak produced uh, like cinema film. Cinesto rolls come without that ramjet backing on them, and they encourage you to just develop them in C41 chemicals. They're very, very popular, but also very expensive. I did this roll of Cinesto 800 in ECN, and it gives flatter results in comparison to it in C41. I do honestly prefer it in C41 if I'm going to shoot it at all, but if you want a more subdued version of this film, 
then you can do it in ECN or just do any of the Vision 3 stuff yourself without buying Cine still. Also, if you get enough ECN 2 kits, then you can develop your own Super 8 and 16 millimeter at home as well, uh, in theory. That is kind of a whole other beast that I will look at eventually. It just involves having like proper tanks. There's older ones, ones like the Morse and the Lomo tanks, but those are kind of overly expensive a lot of the time and uh, not something that I personally want to invest in at the moment because I don't want to hand develop a lot of that stuff. It's just so much film, like 50 feet, 100 feet lengths of film that you have to develop and also make sure that like all the ramjet is gone to the best of your ability and then also be able to hang up and dry in a safe space and then take it into a lab probably anyways and scan it unless you have made or bought like a scanning device for Super 8 or shout out for one for 16. I need more time and a few more resources for a topic like that, but it's on my mind. So there you have it. With an ECN developing kit like this one from Flickfilm, you can instantly open yourself up to a wide variety of professional color cinema film stocks for shooting stills with. Shooting with these beautiful cinematic Vision 3 color cinema film stocks will allow for your work to be held in the same regard as the rich, legacy of timeless movies that this film has helped to capture over the last 20 years. Just think of it, The Expendables, Taken 3, Dracula Untold, Tammy, Transcendence, Runner Runner, G.I. Joe Retaliation, The Lone Ranger, BBC's Merlin, that movie where The Rock plays the tooth fairy called Tooth Fairy, Desperate Housewives, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Jonah Hex, and now all of the incredible photos that you're about to take. Thank you so much for checking this out. Thank you to uh, Flickfilm for supplying this kit a number of months ago. I only just now finally got around to doing this video. Uh, you can check the description below for a bunch of the resources that I've mentioned in this video, as I said, and uh, you can also support the channel through the Patreon as well as some of the merch that's available uh, also through links in the description below. And as always, thank you so much. I'll see you soon.